Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about consoles, and in particular, why I think consoles need to die. And it doesn't mean like all previous consoles, I'm talking about future consoles, new release consoles, the PlayStation 6, the Xbox Series Z, whatever comes next. Consoles need to go away. And why am I saying that? It sounds a bit sacrilege. Why am I saying that? Well, Xbox are already starting to set up something which is their future vision, which is Xbox Game Pass. And look, I know I got a lot of flack in the past from um, Xbox gamers who said, Phil Spencer didn't admit that we lost the gaming war. It's still going. In the FCC documents, he admitted that he lost, that Xbox had lost the gaming war, or at least well, Sony was the lead in that space, or that Xbox was looking to exit that, or hinted at it. But we also saw during the Activision stuff with the FCC, um, so the Xbox acquisition, that Phil Spencer also mentioned that the vision for Xbox is essentially Game Pass and that is what they're really focused on. Now, in the past couple of months, we've seen something like Sea of Thieves pop up on the PlayStation Store, and the amount of pre-orders that thing had was insane. Like, I'll put some stats here on the screen. Um, I'm going to do it in post, but you can see by the numbers. Like, people on PlayStation want to play an Xbox exclusive. And so, it begs the question, why is the brand loyalty? And you might say, oh, but I prefer the, X the PlayStation controller. Cool. Well, they can do a port. Imagine if Xbox decided, you know what? We're going to launch Game Pass on the PlayStation. And in return, we're going to let PlayStation launch whatever they want on the Xbox. Imagine how much money these companies would be making if they played nice together. And I think they get it. I mean, imagine, if you will, an Xbox, as an Xbox gamer, I'm, I'm a PlayStation gamer. If you're an Xbox gamer, do you want to play The Last of Us? I'm just saying, one of the best games of all time. Imagine if that came out on cons uh, on the Xbox or even the Nintendo. Imagine how much money Sony would make doing that. And in vice versa, imagine how much Xbox would make if they put Halo on the PlayStation. I mean, everyone says, oh, this is like exclusivity. We need exclusivity. Well, sorry to tell you, but exclusivity... There's no games coming out for the PlayStation 5 in terms of exclusivity. And you might say, yeah, but they're saving them for PS5 Pro, PS6, PS6 Pro, PS7. Cool. Where are they now? They need to put games out now. But also exclusivity, they're kind of ruining the opportunity they have to um, let the game be all it can be. And you might say, but it sells consoles. Well, going back to my initial point, consoles need to die. That's the truth. They need to go away. In my view, the smartest, the smartest game company, and you might say, oh, but they're all smart. They all are smart. But let's look at, um, let's look at Sega. Well, Sega, Sega, however you say it. I say it Sega, but, you know, um, some Australians will say Sega. There's no right or wrong way. It's, it's all the same brand. You know who I'm talking about. Sonic the Hedgehog, you know. <laughs> but let's look at them. They got out after the Dreamcast. They got out of consoles. And why are they still so profitable? They have no right to be as profitable as they are without a gaming console. It's because their content is what speaks for them. They can put Sonic out on just everything now. It's not exclusive to just a Sega console. It's exclusive to whatever. It can be on Nintendo. It can be on PlayStation. It can be on Xbox. It is not limited. And they are not limiting themselves. Capcom put it out on everything as well. Like, there are all these other gaming companies that play with everyone and they make so much profit because they are on everything. You can get them on everything. There's a reason why Microsoft knew when they bought um, Minecraft, it had to stay on the PlayStation because they knew that game would sell billions of dollars of profit that they would reap the rewards of. Obviously, they own it now. But... They reaped the rewards of that. And I think they seen stuff like that and knew that there is a potential market of 
PlayStation gamers who will buy Xbox games if they are just available. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are PlayStation gamers like myself who I've I've bought an Xbox in the past. The uh, One X and One S sold me on the consoles. Phil Spencer did a really good job of ending the gaming war and got a lot of us PlayStation gamers to check out the other console and vice versa. A lot of Xbox gamers came across and checked out PlayStation. That's how you know the gaming war ended. But what I'm saying is like, there is a lot of potential if gaming companies just work together and say, hey, there will be a Game Pass on PlayStation or hey, you can get Sony PlayStation Plus on the Xbox or on Switch if Switch can handle it. <laughs> but you know, Sega did this 20 odd, 30 odd years ago when they, after the Dreamcast, they gave up on physical hardware. And they are still one of the biggest gaming companies on earth. I'm just saying, there is potential. And the PC master race will be sitting on the side saying, huh, we already do that. We can get every game known to man. We know. We are looking at the PC space too. There is always potential. I mean, if someone just says, okay, we're going to release... We're going to release the, um, imagine, oh, imagine this. Imagine if Sony and, um, Sony and Microsoft work together and build the most capable gaming system on planet Earth right now, the biggest gaming system, then you have one console that ha can play everything except Nintendo games because Nintendo's in the corner doing their own thing and making a killing doing it. But this is what I'm talking about. I'm talking about if we break the template of consoles, if we say, no, we don't want consoles, we don't want PS6, we actually want everything. At the end of the day, gamers win. We win. We can play everything. You don't have to buy a $700 console and a $700 console, and then half the games come out over here, half the games come out over there, and you don't know which ones you want to play, and this one doesn't have any games coming out, this one doesn't have any games coming out, they can't figure out their development teams. Imagine that. You have a few Xbox games, and then if you there's nothing coming out on Xbox, you play a few PlayStation games. And then if Nintendo want to jump in on that market share, you play a few Nintendo games here, like a few Marios. And then, you know, you keep building on it. Imagine the console that can play everything. And that's what I'm talking about. If we're going to continue forward with gaming consoles, there should just be one. And I don't care whether it's Microsoft. I mean, they can do different variations of it, but imagine if they can just play everything. The most capable hardware on planet Earth can play everything. And yes, PC gamers will say, no, the most capable hardware is my $5,000 CPU and my $5,000 GPU and it has to run everything. Yes, we get it. And that is respectable as well. You should be able to play the games as well. Because at the end of the day, content is what drives the sale of consoles. I mean, look at... Look at the uh, streaming space we have Netflix, Disney, and all that, so, so on and so forth. Do you think it's, um, well, obviously their content, so I don't know. But, you know, the sale of those services, do you think that you're just buying them because, oh, Netflix? No, you're buying it because what does Netflix offer? You can watch Stranger Things. You can watch The Crown. Why do you get Disney Plus on? It's certainly not just because, oh, I feel I'm a loyalist to Disney. And maybe you are. Maybe you're a big Disney fan. Why are you a big Disney fan? Is it just because you love Disney? Or is it because Disney do content that relates to you? Now imagine if Disney, and well, Disney and Sony already play together with in terms of like Spider-Man. But this is what I mean. Imagine if Sony said, you know what? We're going to put all of our streaming content, all of our content on Disney Plus. And vice versa, like, Disney are going to share stuff to Netflix and eventually it's all going to compile and come down to one or two or three streaming services because there's too many. But imagine that. Imagine that in the gaming space. Like imagine if you just went to one place and you had everything. That's that's a dream though. That is that is a dream. But that is what, that is what could become a reality. And it's it's actually a lot closer than you would expect because... Xbox are already going that way, and they are really pushing Game Pass. And as Xbox picks up more market share, and trust me, they are going to pick up more market share than Sony. Sony are not doing it. But as soon as Sony see that Xbox are getting a lot more market share because it's the Game Pass is on everything. And imagine if they do Game Pass on the Switch. Imagine how much market share they'll make there. 
Sony will look at their cards and say, we need to get into that. We are losing market share. We can we can make three times the profits by putting it just over there. And back to my initial point of this video, consoles need to die. I believe that. I mean, I made a video a while back saying I'm retiring after PS4 or PS5. And everyone was like, no, you know, you, whatever, you'll pick up PS5 Pro, you'll pick up this. And the fact is, I just don't care because this is, it feels like there's nothing coming out for these consoles. However, imagine if you had a Game Pass on there and you said, okay, well, Sony's not releasing anything right now. I might play some Xbox games. And you've still got the hardware there. Obviously, you've got the PlayStation, so you're taking advantage of it. It's just my view that streaming, well, not streaming, but like, if we're going the route of the Netflix template and the gaming services can house, like Game Pass can house Activision, it can house Blizzard, it can house whatever. Then what they need to do is they need to kill the consoles and they need to work together on one console that they split 50-50. So you have Microsoft own 50%, Sony own 50%. You put them both together and then you have your PlayStation Studios that get a bigger cut of the games, Xbox Studios that get a bigger cut of their games, but it's all on one console. And if they do that, they will make stupid amounts of profit. And that is where gaming needs to go. That is, in my view, the right way for gaming to go. You don't have exclusives coming out right now, but then in between it, if one console is the focus and you have two of the biggest gaming companies focusing on it, Who's going to compete with them? Nintendo can't compete with them. Com Nintendo don't compete anyways. They do their own thing with Mario in the corner. But Sega did it 20 odd, 30 odd years ago where they have their games on everything. And they are still one of the biggest game companies on earth. So the template is there. The template works. And if we stop focusing on consoles as the sole driver of games, the sky's the limit. And any anyways, guys, Thanks for watching for this long, and if you like, like, subscribe, drop a comment, notify, and tell me in the comments why you think consoles have a place in 2024, or why they don't have a place in 2024, or what needs to be done. Do you believe consoles need to go away? Tell me in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.